everyone and welcome to Beyond Focus TV. Tonight, for the second time, we have with us Dr. Eugene Matthew. He is the Councilman of the 40th District. The conversation that we're going to have is pretty much to bring forth ideas, things that he has done within the community that I wanted people to be aware of and kind of talk about because I have great ideas of what I think where he should be at, I mean, that's my political point of view, uh, where we could go in the future. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I'm going to introduce them to you. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. Um, Angie Daniel, and we are here with Dr. Eugene Matthew, Councilman of 30th District. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Angie. It is a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you know what? This is kind of like your second home, and I, I love talking to you because our conversation is really frank and, and open, and I love that. I love bringing... I love talking to you, too. <laughs> I kind of make you sweat, and I like the, uh. <laughs> I like the interaction. Um, but seriously, I wanted to say congratulations to you on op the whole park opening. The last time you were here, we talked about it. We talked about like the difference that you were going to make in the community. Uh, before I brought up, bring up the whole park situation, I wanted to, um, probably a lot of people don't know that you work in terms of education for our youth in Brooklyn and how important that is to you. So I would like for you to explain to the community your involvement in terms of what you do for the education system. You know, uh, let me say that, you know, I believe in education. Yes. And before I came to the United States, and even before I went to medicine, I was teaching also. I was a teacher back home in Haiti. Okay. And I know the importance of education. There is no word that can express how important is education. And I believe that you know, uh, education is the key mm -hmm. to open all the doors to all success. And I think also we as a society, the best investment that we can do is the investment in the education of the children. And education is one of my priorities. Mm -hmm. I've been advocating for education since I got it, before I was elected, because okay. I created, you know, people may know, you, you may have yeah. done that. Yes. I created in the community a non-for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. Yes, Youth for Education <laughs> in Sport. Yeah. And uh, with the help of many volunteers, we were able to, to help the children to improve their academic, you know, uh, skill. Now, as a council member, I'm doing the same thing, but... Uh, with more resources. Yes. And, uh, and, and I do believe that, uh, you know, United States is uh, the best country. Yes, right? I would say. It's the, 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 the most powerful and the best country in the world. But I think that we should be able to give to our children the best education possible. Mm -hmm. That's the reason, you know, I've been advocating for education. Mm -hmm. Whether it is a, a closure of the school, when they want to close school, yeah. I'm there. Fighting, yes. you know, protesting. I, I against saw that. I saw you <laughs> fighting for PS 139. 139. Yeah. So I mean, and also they wanted to close the school at uh, uh, Wingate High, High, yeah. High School, and I was there also. Good. And I was there, you know, many times in, in many places. And also, you know, for my budget, uh, I was about to provide funding to all the school in my district yes. for computer labs. And and I really want to I really uh, seriously I really want to thank you for that because um, you know our inner youth are not receiving as much mm -hmm. as let's say for example Manhattan mm -hmm. and for you to to be able to bring that forward and having the same value or the same education level or at least have what's available to them to the Brooklynites kids I think that's that's awesome so. I'm sorry for cutting no, you off. No, I just no, wanted to. Thank you for your, you know, your comment. But yeah, what I'm saying is that I've been able to provide to all the school in my district funding for, for them to buy computer labs for all the students, and with a smart board. And also, I was able to provide them also with funding for after-school program, yes. art, sport, and music. 
because education is not only providing to the children mathematics skills science yes. biology and chemistry but we have to make sure that they, they, they receive all the, 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 the information that they need to become positive and well rounded individual you know I just wanted to kind of bring I like just a point I wanted to make I don't think people understand a 21st century if you are in a neighborhood where computer everybody is computer literate like I have a two-year-old niece she knows the phone system like where to go and how to download music and all that great stuff if they like your school sit your school unit is not up to par in terms of getting them educated on like smart board you mentioned smart board like that's what people used to use in college that and and you know that's what you knew in college now every everyone in a level of you know like if you're in like fifth grade you are already using a smart board and for you to bring that to to the Brooklyn that kids I don't think I don't think we are as aware of what's of what was not available to us and I am hoping like you know, I've mentioned this to you before, that we would take, you know, um, opportunity to help our kids understand. And you were saying that education is not just what we teach our kids, like math or English. It's you continued with the sports that you are yeah, in the sport, after school yes. program. Mm -hmm. After school program, I mean, every, everything that we can provide to any information, mm -hmm. uh, 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 knowledge, and of skill that we can provide the children with you know, would be very, very important for the education. Mm. And also, when we are talking about the school, the schools should be places, you know, where the children feel comfortable. Yes. Safe. Safe. And suitable for the children. Yeah. And that the reason I gave also funding to my to the, all the school and magistrate to renew the auditorium, to renew the classroom, classroom. And you know, Erasmus as school. Yes. Now, I, I'm going to uh, choose Erasmus as an example. Mm -hmm. Erasmus is, you know, has a beautiful auditorium. Yes. Beautiful auditorium. Yeah. But when you go to a graduation ceremony in Erasmus, and you see the, the, the auditorium is gorgeous, it's uh, wonderful. Yeah. But the children, they're well-dressed, the parents are well-dressed, but it's so hard inside. Okay. I don't think this is fair to those children. Yes, yes. After working so hard, Mm -hmm. And you had, and you know, they are going to receive the diploma, and they are going to be graduate, and then you see everybody with with a piece of yes, paper, yes. you know, trying to true. get some fresh air. Guess what? What I, did, what I did? I provided millions of dollars to Erasmus School. Now they are going to have a brand new air really? conditioning system. That's good. That's because good. that where the you know the, they use the auditorium for a function, and also there are other organizations in the neighborhood. That's used the auditorium. Yeah. And the, one of the principals told me that people used to pass out because it's too hard. <laughs> I can understand that. And yeah. several times they had to go to Bougain College yeah. to rent the place. But they cannot afford it. Okay. So w when I say, when I think about education, and we usually say that it takes a village to raise, to a, raise child. a child. Yes. And I think it is our responsibility. When I say our responsibility, mm -hmm. I'm talking about elected officials, officials. teachers, mm -hmm. parents, community leaders, churches, all of us, we got to come together to provide Can all Can you children. repeat that again so people will understand <laughs> what it means to have a whole village raising a child? It takes elected, elected officials. Elected officials, parents, teachers, yes. community leaders, churches, all of us, even the, the student too, yes. they have to be part of the equation. Yes. We all have to come together. To make sure that we provide to our young people, to our children, to our future leaders, to our future the leaders. best education possible. And and with that, you know, with with that statement, it is it is a system that it's so imperative. Like what you just said, it's so imperative for us to understand how, if you make the difference at the third grade, how you don't know where because i can tell you like i know where my life has changed like at what time and where i was that i knew where i wanted to go into life i knew when i wanted to go to college i wanted i knew exactly what college i wanted to go into um i wanted to i want to continue this conversation but we're going to take a short break and when i come back we're going to talk about another place that you're making a big difference within brooklyn we're going to take a short break we'll be right back
Welcome back. You are watching Beyond Focus TV. Of course, I'm Angie Daniel. We are here with Councilman Eugene Matthew for the second part. We were, before we took a break, we were talking about the good things that you are doing within the education system. But I know that earlier I congratulated you on the whole park notion. I remember the first time you were here, we talked about like how you had planned to open this park. How do you feel right now that you've achieved part of your goal for the community? You know, uh, uh, and let me tell you honestly, I'm very proud and also I'm very happy to see that I was able to achieve this uh, yes. wonderful goal, not only for myself, but for the community. Community. To be able to provide a safe place, a wonderful place like the playground, mm -hmm. not only to the children, to the family members, to the parents, this is something you know wonderful. and. Uh, we were talking about education, mm -hmm. but it is very important also for the young people to have a place yeah. where they can go and Relax. engage, be engaged yes. in uh, uh, physical activities. Yes. Right now, we know that obesity, mm -hmm. childhood obesity is a major issue in New York City. And yes, you know what I said? Yes. Because we need to encourage the young people to be engaged on physical activities. activities. Yes, very important. And also, you know, it's, it's, they will have the opportunity to hang out, to socialize, yeah. see what I mean? and to develop your, you know, the, the skill, to practice sport. I know what sport did for me. Okay. I love sport, I've been practicing sport since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you know, in New York City, not all the parents have a backyard. Yes, that's true. Children, they grow up you know, in the apartment. Mm -hmm. But to, to be able to, to go to the park, to be able to go to the playground, get some fresh air yes. and do some exercise. This is very, very important also for them. It is, it is. It and uh, what was so uh, very important also, on Saturday, June 30th, mm -hmm. I saw people from all ethnic background. That's so cool. All ethnic background getting together, you know, enjoying the park. And we had also a basketball tournament. Tournament, I saw that. A handball tournament. We yeah. have chess tournament. You know, that was so, so wonderful. And I say, oh, God, thank you very much. Yeah. And I think that we are going to see that the children, instead of staying in the street, mm -hmm. you know, they would go to the park, spend okay. the day, especially now mm -hmm. in the summertime. It's, it's really hot now. It's really hot now. I have to honestly tell you, when I saw the, the email about the opening of the park, I, I could not attend. But I was so, like, so happy for you. I mean, I, I think... It's not just like an achievement. You could, you, I, I mean, for me, it's a matter of like saying like, oh, you know, this is what I, I've done. It's not really about that. It's about achievement, goals, setting goals. And, and I think that was part of your goal. You talked about it when you talked about it. You looked as happy as you look right now. Then, I'm very, very you know, I, I'm very, very pleased about well, it. It took, it, it took me, it took us, that yes. me and the Park and Recreation Department, mm -hmm. years to, put to achieve to that goal. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, believe me, this is something so wonderful. You can stop by. If you I, I, <laughs> I have, I have. And actually, you know, one of the things that we need to understand is that achieving this this momentum, having the park, it's not so much like what you've done. It's the community benefits. Mm -hmm. And for us to have that, like if you can make that happen and, and that area, I, actually we should mention where it's located at so people would be able to go and sit down. Absolutely. And it is located beyond, uh, you know, close to uh, PS92. Mm -hmm. It is an adventure between Parkside, between Bedford and Rogers. Yeah. And when we talk about uh, uh, quality of life, this is improving the quality of life of people oh, in my neighborhood. Yes. yes. Every time that they have, I have the opportunity to do something to improve the quality of life of my constituent, uh, of the people in New York, I would do everything to make it happen. Let's talk about the constituent quality <laughs> of life. I, uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is um, Kings County Hospital. I know you are an advocate for the hospital because it serves your community base. It serves us. It's here for us. And a lot of time people don't understand what it means to have a hospital. I mean, people see it as like, oh, this is a free hospital, but we don't... Ha Seriously, I think the community misunderstand what the hospital stands for and the value of that hospital within Brooklyn. It has probably the best, I, I, I say this, probably the best cancer center in New York in itself. We underestimate what's available to us. And I know you've been a big you know, supporter for the hospital, so let's talk about the quality of life. You know, How much makes a difference? Yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. But before I speak about Kings County and the value of Kings County, you say something. People believe that, you know, uh, uh, the hospital is free. There is yeah. no free service. There is no services. free service. Yeah. Somebody paid for it. Exactly. Because you know, the hospital 
her staff, mm -hmm. she buy equipment. Yes. You know, there, there are a lot of expenses. Mm -hmm. So Kings County, you know, is a wonderful hospital. It's wonderful very valuable, facility. important hospital, not only in my district, but in the central Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Because people who go to Kings County, some of them, they don't have medical insurance. Yes. Some of them, they don't have even, you know, uh, immigration status. Yes. Regardless of the uh, possibility to pay, regardless of immigration status, when they go there, they receive services. Services, yes. And I believe this is a big, you know, a very important asset for the community. Mm -hmm. That the reason as a city council member, every year I fight. Yes, I know. I fight <laughs> to secure funding yes. for Kings uh, County. Yeah. And uh, last year, I, you know, I was able to provide funding for them to buy uh, ICU monitors and many yes. other equipment that they need. But for the current budget, 2000. Uh, 12 and 2013, mm -hmm. I was able to, get, to provide them with funding to buy a linear accelerator okay. that cost about 3 million point five. Mm -hmm. Why it was important? You know that there are different diseases, but some of the diseases, they are horrible. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about cancers. Cancers, yes. You know, when people are suffering from cancer, this is not only that person, you know, is suffering from the disease, but the, the whole family, family, the whole, the whole family. family goes through it. See me? Yes. Family the burden. So, what happened when people are suffering from suffering from cancer? They used to go to Manhattan to go mm -hmm. somewhere else, but now, right there in King's at King County Hospital, they will be able to receive treatment yeah. because with the linear accelerator, mm -hmm. the doctors will be able, able to, see. to detect the cancer earlier yeah. and also to treat it also. Yeah. And this is so, so wonderful. And that's the reason, you know, excuse me if I'm going to say that, and I, I have to say that <laughs> in the same cold minute, yes. I have to thank God oh, for no. giving me this opportunity, the opportunity to make the, a difference in the life of people. Yes. Because as a, as a medical doctor myself, I know that health is the most precious gift that we receive from God. Yes, it is true, so it mean, is true. Because no matter how much money you have, if yes. you're not healthy, there is nothing, nothing that you can do you can with that. Do. You know, um, I just wanted to piggyback right on what you mentioned about the cancer being able to be recognized earlier. I, I think part of that is, you know, now we have an opportunity to educate the community on so much more. I think, I, you know, you might say that you, you give three point something million dollars to the hospital just to prevent or to cure. But what you are doing, you're opening a new new door for the hospital to help the community that they are in uh, and help people help themselves mm -hmm. you know it's 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 just tremendous work we have a whole lot more that i want to talk to you about but we're going to take a short break we'll be right back You are back with Beyond Focus TV. I'm Angie Daniel, having a great conversation with Councilman Eugene Matthews. So we've talked about like your position within the community, how you have helped make differences. And I don't know if the, the camera has caught up like your face, how, <laughs> <laughs> how happy you look. Um, you know, it, it's not you, just you being proud of yourself, but you have this genuine like happiness that you feel. You know, I, I've, I've achieved, I, I've made points, I, I value what I do. Um, and the background is all it is, right? We all have a cell phone, so it rings at time. So, and then you're the councilman, so that's all right. Um, I, I value to, to the effect of what you have done so far. Where do you see yourself in the future? I love the five years, one year. Give me a short-term, long-term goal for, for <laughs> Councilman Eugene Matthews. You know, every single day, <laughs> people are asking me the same question. 
But let me tell you. People uh, need to know. People yeah, want to know. You know, they have the right to know. And let me tell you that uh, as a city council member, mm -hmm. what I love, you know, I love serving. Mm -hmm. I love doing something to make a difference in the life of people. And that's what I've been doing before I was elected. Okay. But my main focus right now, and I am glad that you asked that question. <laughs> I need to because know, I need to know. My main focus now is to do everything that I can do to improve the quality of life of the people that I'm serving. Mm -hmm. And also to do everything that I can do to be the best servant that I can do, that I can be. Okay. Five years you know, you know, from today, I don't know what's going to happen. I leave it to God. Okay. But the only thing that I want to do, but I want to be... We can plan, although we're living it up to God. See, I can tell you five years from now where I see myself. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I could see myself somewhere. Where do you see yourself five years from you now? You know, five years from, from, from now, <laughs> you know, I want to be able to, say, to, to go look back and say, you know what, I've done that. Yes. I've done this, mm -hmm. and I've made a difference. Yes. An impact in the life of people. And I want to do more. Yeah. Because there is, there's, there, we have so much to to do. Okay, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna rephrase the question. I'm gonna change it over. Okay, within <laughs> this community, where do you think right now your five years for the community is? Where do you see this community in five years? You know, that, that, that's a good question. <laughs> I love this one. You know, in five years, I, you know, they say New York is a melting pot. Yes. And I would love to see all the New Yorkers, regardless of where you came from, mm -hmm. we come together as one people yeah. as one community work hard to provide to the children the best education possible to make sure that all the hospitals that we have mm -hmm. receive the resources that That's they available. need mm -hmm. to provide the best health care possible to the people okay. and I want uh, you know I envision that all of us can come together and make New York a beautiful place where all of us will be happy to live and to raise our children and our children's children. Okay. This is what I'm, you know, what I'm looking for, I'm focused on. That's what I think that, you know, I will be helpful okay. achieving that. And that's why I'm working so hard. But after that, the rest, I leave it in God's hands. See, okay, so I took the five years, right? So that's like the biggest part. So, in a year from now. <laughs> in a year, I could, okay. You know, honestly speaking, as a politician, as a person who... There's a difference between people who are running politics and then they're just running back and forth. You can see that they're tired. They don't want to be in the public space. One of the things that people cannot say about you is not like you're not involved. You are 110% involved. A year from now, where do you see yourself? You know, uh, I got many uh, projects, okay. many goals okay. that I want to accomplish for the community. Okay. The least of uh, projects that I have you know, it's so long. Okay. But in a year from now, uh, I want to see that, I, w I want to feel, you know, that I have accomplished more than what I have accomplished, you know. A year before. A year before. That is so cool. I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. I like that and, answer. And uh, I think that uh, in a year from here, from now, mm -hmm. I will be able to accomplish more, probably four, five, or ten more projects for the okay. community. And I will be able to make a bigger dif difference in the life of people. And I will be able to help more children yeah. and more constituents. And I will be able to make the community or my district better than what it is today. Yeah. And I will contribute to make New York City a better place for everybody. Okay. Well, can I, can I add to your project, for, uh, your list of projects? Um, I work within the community, so I can see some of the lacks and some of the needs. One of the things that I notice is that we have a lot of young men that are in need of having a future plan, right? So can you, and, and, and you're re-educating, re reconstruction of Brooklyn Nights or 40th District. Mm -hmm. Can we create like some sort of like a, a place where they can go and learn, have a skill? Not just a skill, because I, I think, I believe that, I believe in education. I, d I don't believe in people just having a skill to work, but I believe like, you see how you look happy because you're doing something that's worthwhile, something that you think is making a difference. Being able to provide that to the community, I think, would be one of the greatest things that you do. You're talking about one of my projects. <laughs> I didn't know that, cause I, <laughs> you know, I because really, I really... Uh, you know, when you talk about uh, young people, yes, they are a, a group of, uh, uh, a section of the community that is close to my heart. Yeah. 
because I do believe that young people, they are the future, and if we provide them with the best opportunities, mm -hmm. we can deter them from the negative path and set them to the world of success and empowerment. Yeah. And I do believe that we have the obligation to do everything that we can do to, to help those young people. If we can change the young people, yes. we can you know, change, we'll change the community mm -hmm. and we will secure the future of Brooklyn, the future of New York City, and the future of our society. I know, I, I, I agree with you. I don't believe that young people don't know what to do with themselves, so they just want to be in the street, roaming the street. But I believe that a lot of the time, it's because they have nothing else to fall back on. I, I don't believe that they just want to fight among themselves or just disagree. And like, if we create pathways, mm -hmm. pathways to better, to better things, to, to you know, free, Free them from having to provide for themselves. Free them from having that. The, that's your. That's the only way you can go is down. Like if we create ways for them to get to the top, I think it'll be a lot, a lot better for our community. You know, the young people they need opportunities. Yes. And if we create give jobs. them the opportunities, they can become the best person. You know, they can become also uh, the next president of United States, yes. the next Congress member. The next, you know, city council member, teachers, doctors, and you know, and you so name on. it, and yes. so on. Yes, and it can happen with the likes of people like yourself within the community and yourself too. Yes, and let yes. me say that you are doing a wonderful job too. Thank and you. And I'm so proud to be with you. Thank you, thank you. I'm really proud to have you on my show. Um, well, this is the end of our show. Um, I don't know. I I could see you as I don't want to say it because I don't want to put it out there. <laughs> but I love putting things out there. So future mayor we never know things might happen you know people are saying a lot of things <laughs> so as i said i leave it in god's hand leave it in god's hand god but has the only the thing that i know that you know five years from now i will do i will be able to make a bigger difference in the I life know. of people that i'm you know i'm convinced i can see it in your face I'm i can see that you're that enjoying what you're doing I, I love it yeah and i thank god every minute for giving me the opportunity to be helpful to people because I believe we are that we are all blessed and yes. fortunate. And I think that the best use that we can do of our blessing is to, to share give. it yes. with other people. Ungratefully. I love that. I love I love being able to participate within the spectrum of what you have to share with the community. I thank you so much for coming to the show. This is the end of our show. I hope that you have received as much as I have. I'm really, really thankful for having Dr. Eugene Matthew on our show, great councilman of Brooklyn. Thank you for all of your it's work. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. No, anytime, anytime. Because I want the community to know all the great things that you are doing. Thank you. This is the end of our show. I hope to see you next Tuesday, same place, same time. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you.